Hi, I'm Birgit Wins. I'm a technical analyst at Geosoft, and today I'll be demonstrating Target, our latest release, version 7.1. For those of you who are already users of Target, you'll be able to see the latest features that we're putting out in this release. For those of you who are new to Geosoft, this will give you an idea of the workflow that geologists typically use when using our software. On the screen, I have the latest version of Target running. And I have a map here that's already open. Now I'm just going to pretend I'm a geologist for a moment. I've been out in the field, I've collected my data, I have now brought it back to the office, and I've imported that data into Target, and now I'm ready to visualize it. So coming back from the field, I'm looking at my region here of interest, um, in a region of British Columbia. You can see how I have elevation data, and on top of that I have some contour lines. So I'm going to add some additional features that I found in the field. For example, some geology polygons, and uh, some river information. I have some roads, and I have some fault lines. And here you can see I have fault lines, as well as an anticline fold structure in my area. But of most importance to me, and in particular with using Target, are the drill holes and the drill hole data. So I'm going to activate those here. These are my drill hole collars. Each little circle represents the location of my drill hole, and each of them are colored based on the drill hole depth. It's another powerful feature of Target that we can pull attributes from our drill hole data and visualize them in this way. I also can turn on my drill hole traces and see how they are uh, reflected or projected onto this surface map. After creating a plan map like this, I have a good understanding of my area. I might want to create a section um, to see the, my drill hole traces from the side underneath the ground. So I've drawn this box here. This green bo box illustrates where my section will be located. And in the interest of saving time, I've already created this section map. So I'll just open it now. Here's a section map for that area in that green rectangle. You can see here that I have several drill hole traces, and along those traces, I have numeric bands that illustrate my values of silver down my drill hole traces. In the background, I have a section, or a clip, of one of my voxels. And we'll get into voxels later on, but voxels are a three-dimensional grid where each cube represents a single value down my drill hole traces. So in the background here, this voxel is, illustrates my values of uh, percentage lead zinc ratios uh, down my drill hole traces. You can see here in this pink area, we have an anomalous zone. So this might be an area of interest where we can collect more data. I'm going to go back into my map here, into my plan map, and I'm going to propose that we drill some more drill holes. I'm going to use the snapshot tool. I'm going to right click and activate one of my snapshots that I've already created. And this will jump me to a region of the map that's, that contains this layer. So I zoomed into my proposed hole snapshot. And you can see here that these crosses represent my proposed hole locations. They weren't visible on the full scale map that we were at previously because we set this scale in such a way that the proposed holes are only visible at this scale or at this level of zoom. So you can see within this green box that uh, highlights my section location, I have these proposed holes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my geologists out in the field, maybe I'll go out myself and create new drill holes for these specific locations. Once I've done that, I've analyzed my data, I want to then bring that data into this project and update it. So what you can do is go into DH Data, Refresh Project. And this is a huge time saver because if you want to import your data and update your project, the Refresh Project will remember all of the previous settings from your original import and update your project for you. So once I've done that, I've imported and updated my target drill hole project, I now need to update my maps. And there are two ways to do this, and I'm going to illustrate that in uh, these section maps. So previously, for those of you who are already users of Target, you may recognize this, we can select the section map, we can right click, and then there's the option here to recreate section. Once you click on that, you get the dialog box for the section parameters. You can click OK, and it will regenerate your section for you. You'll notice that it's re regenerated the section with two additional drill holes, one here and one here. One of the drill holes has assay information, the other one doesn't. So once that information is collected down the other drill hole, you can again use the Refresh Project button and the Recreate Section option to update your project and update your maps. 
I have another section map I'd like to show you. This one has polygons that illustrate my geological interpretations. So these are polygons that I've drawn within Target, and one of our new features available in 7.1 is to recreate the section without overwriting those digitizations. If you go into DH plot, replot holes on existing plan or section, it opens the replot section hole parameters dialog box. So this will allow us to replot our holes with our updated information without overwriting our map. Our clients have asked for this, and so we're really excited to be able to offer this now, because previously you had to save this, you save your digitizations to another format and re-import it in. So this is something that we hope will, will greatly improve your workflow. In addition to creating section maps within Target, we can create other kinds of maps. So you've seen here we can create plan maps, section maps. We can also create strip logs, where we're looking at one drill hole trace and elements along those drill hole traces along the right-hand side. We can also make fence diagrams where we can connect multiple drill holes in any configuration and connect the dots so that we see our rock geology patterns uh, across those drill hole traces. But something that we're really excited about with the Target 7.1 release is the new 3D interface. So I'm going to activate our 3D map. What you see here is a static image of our 3D map. To turn on the viewer, we have a brand new button at the top here called Open 3D Viewer. It's a little additional icon that we added to the toolbar that'll, that'll quickly allow you to open the 3D Viewer. For those of you who are already Target users, you'll notice that we have changed the 3D interface quite a lot. And we've done so in order to improve the usability of it. So within the 3D map here, or within the 3D Viewer, I can rotate the 3D model that you see here uh, using the standard methods. Uh, I'm using my mouse here to, to rotate it, to zoom in and zoom out. The navigation controls have greatly improved from our previous version. For example, we have several hotkeys now. If I press on the P button, it activates the panning tool. If I press on the R button, it activates the rotating tool. If I click on the Z button, it activates the zooming tool. And the F button returns to the full view. Another really interesting thing is if I hold down the control key and I zoom in, the target will zoom into where my mouse is currently located. So I'll just reset that here. On the left-hand side, you can see the various data layers that I've added to my 3D map. And on the top left corner, you can see Add to 3D. This is where I add my elements to my 3D map. I can add a relief surface. I can add grids. I can add voxels and ISO surfaces. I can add drill holes. More importantly, under the Imports tab, I can add a variety of different file types. And what's new to version 7.1 are the last three here. GEMCOM, MineSight, and the UBC file formats. So once I've imported my data, I can start to visualize it. And here's an example of a voxel. You may remember from the section map that this voxel was uh, created in cross-section and added to the back of my section map. So this is the original voxel that that section was taken from. And you can see here that each cube represents a single value of my lead-zinc ratio down my drill hole traces. What I can do is I can highlight this voxel, and in the window that pops up below, I can simply change its transparency by moving the slider over. I can also change the appearance to a wireframe. And I can use the clipping options to click along the X, Y, and Z axes. So here's an example of viewing it through the x-axis. Another thing we can do is clip away our lowest values. So I can use the data clipping tool and just remove my low values to highlight where I have my high concentrations of lead sink. And from this information, I can create an ISO surface. An ISO surface is a smooth surface shell that represents a single data value down my drill hole trace. So for example, here's an ISO surface, and I'm going to activate another one as well. You can have ISO surfaces that envelop other ISO surfaces, and you can change the colors very easily. I'll change this one to yellow, 
and I'll modify the transparency of the outer one so that you can see the isosurface within the other isosurface. Under the export settings, you'll see that we have the 3D PDF and the AutoCAD DXF file format to export to. What's new to version 7.1 is that you can export your ISO surfaces now to the AutoCAD DXF file format. And the advantage of this is that you can then take your ISO surfaces and put them in another third-party application that reads those file formats, or you can add them to your maps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate one of my section maps again. This is the one that we saw before. I'm going to turn off my digitizations for now. And I've already imported my ISO surface. And here's an example of it. This pink area here represents the center of my ISO surface. In that export, I can also visualize the front of that ISO surface and the back of that ISO surface. So you can see here how I've added my ISO surfaces to my section map. And this is really useful to see where I have my high values of lead zinc down my drill traces. It's just another method of doing that. As you may have noticed, as I pointed out, uh, in the 3D viewer, I did have the option to export to a 3D PDF. So I'll activate that now. So here's the 3D PDF that I've already created. It has the same layers that are available or that we saw in the 3D viewer. The real advantage of this is that you can create this 3D PDF and send it to anybody who has a version of Adobe Acrobat Reader, which is, of course, free. So anybody that opens up this map will be able to turn layers on and off, rotate it, and view your model from a variety of perspectives. What's also a great advantage is that when you're sending the 3D PDF, you're not actually sending the data either. So if you're protective about your information but still want to disseminate your information, this is a really great way to do that. So anyone opening up your map will have the ability to turn layers on and off. You'll see here that I can turn off my voxel, for example. They have the ability to rotate the image. And what's new to version 7.1 is that with the export to a 3D PDF, we can now export our text that you see here representing our axes. So now you've seen some of the new features for target version 7.1. We've looked at how we can create a variety of different maps. We've looked at how we can recreate our section maps with our new updated whole information without overriding our digitizations. You've seen our new 3D tool and uh, how we can export our ISO surfaces now to a DXF format. And you've seen how we can create a 3D PDF for you to present your 3D models to another person that doesn't have a 3D viewer. The 3D interface that you saw today is not exclusive to Target. It's also available in Oasis Montage version 7.1 and in Target for ArcGIS version 3.1. If you're interested in seeing other demonstrations of our latest releases, we have one on Oasis Montage and the geophysics applications. We also have one on geochemistry for ArcGIS, which is our new product. Thank you.